Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we talk about all things photography and apparently video, because today we're going to be talking about 8K, because I don't want it, Tony. I kind of do. What, what the heck? And I've got data to back it up. What the heck? After the break, we're going to talk about what life with 8K is really like, the storage, the editing, the publishing of it, like how much of a pain it is, and what it actually costs, because I've done the math. And then I sent out a poll to 1,900 of you that patiently sat through clip after clip to find out if you can actually see 8K, and specifically if you can see I 8K, Chelsea. I took the test. And there's an, actually an update to a previous R5 test, some important piece of information about the video and overheating that I'm going to clarify. But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. If you want your own beautiful website, you can do that with Squarespace. And it's so easy. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own. And it's so inexpensive that it's free for 14 days with no credit card needed. And after that, they have affordable prices and they give us a coupon to pass to you. So try it out for 14 days, squarespace.com slash Chelsea, and use the coupon code Chelsea to get that 10% off. It's in the description down below. Thank you, Squarespace. First, I've edited several 8K videos on my MacBook Pro. Yeah. It's, it's fine. That like, shocks me. How? I don't even know. Like, the yeah. Mac does some magic in Final Cut. It pre-renders clips, so it all moves kind of smoothly. But when you get to rendering it, it's awful. <laughs> awful. My first 8K video, it only had 13 minutes of 8K footage because that's oh. how long the R5 lasted until it overheated. How long did it take to render? I, I don't know exactly, but it was at least eight and a half hours because I had to just leave it overnight. Maybe we should explain to people what rendering is in case they're not really into video. Yeah, once you edit a video on your computer, you have to then publish it out to one big video file that includes all your edits. Yeah. And the Macs don't seem to have a codec for rendering 8K video. So for the computer nerds out there, it doesn't use the GPU. It only uses the processor for 8K footage for some reason. So maybe this will be improved later. All right. Doing. How much would an 8K camera actually cost? For an HD camera, you can get a good vlogging camera for 500 bucks. For HD. Right. If you want full width 4K, you're looking at about 3,700 bucks camera and a decent lens. And if you want to go 8K, you're getting right now an R5, and I would put you in a higher quality lens, a 24 to 70 f2.8, and now you're looking at over $6,000. Wow. Yeah, so the camera equipment costs really increase kind of exponentially. And people might forget that you need that good glass to go with your camera, because if you don't have a good lens, you're not appreciating the value of 8K. And your computer needs to be more powerful too, because it's pushing more data through. You need to be able to keep up with the throughput from the disk drive to the processor oh. and all this. So for me, I spec'd out Macs for processing HD video, 1500 buck MacBook would be fine. If you want 4K, you really need to upgrade to about a $2,800 computer. Yeah. And for 8K, I would max it out and be at like $5,500 to have any chance of doing a decent You rendering. could probably save some money if you didn't go the Mac route and pay the Mac tax. Yeah, get a big, cheap PC and yeah. Yeah. Your storage costs quadruple when you go from HD to 4K or 4K to 8K. This is part of the reason I don't want to switch to 8K because I don't think I could tell the difference when I was taking your tests and I also don't want to deal with the storage. But I know whether you could tell the difference or not. Well, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, and those storage costs are not just the drive in your computer, but it's the memory card in your camera and it's your backup storage too. So you really need three different types of storage because your working drive needs to be high performance for things like 4K and 8K. So what we saw is, yeah, the storage costs do seem to quadruple going from HD to 4K to 8K. What if I don't want to deal with the backup storage and I say, I'll just leave it to fate and save a little extra money? <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to save money. <laughs> That's what most people do, so... Is it really? Yeah, most people don't have a backup. <laughs> Just cutting corners and hoping things don't go wrong. So total storage costs, you can be running an HD YouTube channel for about two grand. 4K, it's going to cost you about $7,000, and 8K will be about $14,000. Just for storage? No, that's camera, computer, storage everything the way I spec'd it out. You could certainly save some money or you could spend more, but $14, roughly. $14,000 just for people's viewing pleasure? Yeah, so that means, but that's not a huge number for big YouTube channels. And there are literally 
tens of thousands of channels bigger than our channel. I don't believe like, it's a anything big audience. you're saying. I don't want 8K. I don't believe they're bigger channels. Don't even rather shut your mouth. So 8K <laughs> costs more, but is it worth it? I really tried hard to find this out, and that's why I had 1,900 of you look at little side-by-side -side clips and tell me which one you thought looked better. We're going to tell you all of this and whether Chelsea can see 8K or not I after the break. I have a 5K monitor. That's pretty impressive, and I watched it in 8K, so we'll see if I can tell. But first, let's tell you all about our Lord and Savior Squarespace. If you want your very own website to display your beautiful photos, if you're even thinking about 8K at all, of course you want a beautiful place to show off your photos, and you should do that at squarespace.com because they have gorgeous designer templates that are streamlined and modern and professional and you can drag and drop in your photos. And it's not just chronological, you can show off your best photos and you can get a free trial, no credit card needed. I already told you that in the beginning of this. Weren't you paying attention? Get your free trial at squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. It's in the description down below. I like when Southern Belle Chelsea comes out. I don't know why sometimes you become a Southern Belle. I think it's this hot wine you gave me. It's hot. <laughs> First, when I just asked you all what video oh, no. format you would use if cost was not a factor, 15% of you said Full HD, 66% of you said 4K, and 18% of you said 8K or more. Some people actually pick 12K. Can I break this down on a psychological level? 15% don't even want to dream more than 10. <laughs> Even if it's free, they're like, no. I just keep me where I am, Tony Northrup. <laughs> Here's the single most important piece of data. I showed several side-by-side -side clips, but then I also showed individual clips in different formats scattered throughout. Because in the real world, we do not view photos or video side-by-side -side at different resolutions. The fact is, people can be happy with a low resolution image until they see it next to a high resolution image and then it looks garbage. And we discovered this on our own because our studio here is just full HD. But one day I put the 8K camera next to it and used it as a B camera and switched between them and suddenly the full HD camera looked like garbage. Nobody complained about our full HD until I put the 8K camera there. May I be contrarian for a moment before yeah. you get to your most important data set? When HD was first popular, we had a very old TV and my parents got an HD TV and everything on it looked too sharp. Like We'd go to my parents' house and be like, ew, why can I see your news anchor's pores? I do not like this. And we felt that way until everyone had an HD TV but us. And then mm -hmm. ours looked old. Point being, Juan Juan Chelsea, thinks that as soon as 8K gets popular enough to be everywhere, people will be able to appreciate the difference. Fair enough. So I asked people to rate a standalone clip, not side by side, on a scale from one to five, with five being the best. Yeah. They rated the HD clip at 3.4. Out of what? Out of five. I love five. Keep up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> they rated the 4K clip 3.4. Still out of five? Out of five. <laughs> and they rated the 8K clip 3.4. It made no difference. <laughs> Nobody knows. People we are... will see a difference when we put them side by side, but standalone, nobody cares. And that's why our Ooh. studio is still full HD. That's why I did quickly upgrade everything to an R5, because realistically, unless it's side by side, it doesn't matter that much. But I do want to single out the small portion of our audience. I think it's 15% of people who actually watch the video in 8K, including Chelsea here. That was me. The 8K people did appreciate the higher resolution by a small margin. They rated the HD clip at 3.0, the 4K clip at 3.5, and the 8K clip at 3.7. Yeah. Now, there's some problems with the polls. A lot of people, when I ask them to take the poll, they put their smartphone down and went to their computer. I think that was your error as the poll creator. Okay. Because you had to switch between windows, so I had to go to my computer to take it. Yeah, but... I'm going to factor that out because I had so many responses. I'm able to isolate just the smartphone users okay. so we can talk about their experience because 11% of the people taking the poll were on a smartphone, but 44% of our regular audience is on a smartphone. So you can see a large portion 
switch to a different device than they would normally watch on. So for you creators out there, look at your own demographics and factor this in. I'm going to always talk about how smartphone users rated things versus users on TVs, computers, tablets, etc. Uh, only about 30% of people watch it in 4K or higher. So most people still watch it in less than 4K. Okay. But in our normal demographics, the number of people watching in 4K or higher is more like 3%. Oh, okay. I showed a vlog clip side by side, just somebody talking to the camera. It was me. It was you? Yeah. And upgrading from HD to 4K, only about 36% of people thought the 4K version even looked better than the HD version. Mm -hmm. So still, two-thirds of people didn't notice upgrading from HD. If you look at just smartphone users, that was about 16%. So if your audience is all smartphone users, just record in 1080. It's pretty much fine. When we upgraded from 4K to 8K, basically zero people could see any sort of 3%. improvement. 3%. 3% That's overall. not zero, Tony. Except for the people actually watching in 8K, about 23% of them actually did notice the difference, and more than half of them appreciated the upgrade to, to 4K. So if you have an audience who is using big monitors, they appreciate high resolution, then they will see a little bit better sharpness when they view it side by side. Now, subconsciously, I think people do see they absorb it as better production values. I think it can be an easy way to overall improve your video's appearance without needing to be like a make better content. <laughs> yeah, cheat. <laughs> I showed some clips of my dog Sandy and this was interesting because she has a lot more detail than my face. You know, she's all hair and She's a very dust detailed and cloud. dog. People have told us that. <laughs> she turns 16 next week. Yes, yeah, she very, has very old. many details. 90% of people appreciated the upgrade from HD to 4K, and 73% appreciated the upgrade to, from 4K to 8K. So dogs look great in 8K. The takeaway is, if you're doing wildlife videos, yes, get 8K. If you're filming the next planet Earth, yes, get 8K. People yeah. will appreciate that. Even 54% of smartphone users appreciated seeing the content upgraded from 4K to 8K, because that extra detail really does appear even when they view it in lower resolutions. It's not lost. When you film in 8K, you produce better 4K video. You produce better HD video. If the content doesn't have a lot of detail in it, like a human face, they won't notice. But if it does have fur and hair and tiny little details, they'll see it. What if you have a very furry person? Then if you want to highlight that, you might not want to, then go for 8K. <laughs> Tony. You left out a data set I was interested in, which was age. You asked me my age, rude, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not seeing how you've pulled that apart. I, I thought about factoring in whether people of different ages perceive this differently, and then I got so sick of looking at Excel spreadsheets that I just blew it off. So Lazy. I've done nothing with the age number. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasted everybody's time. <laughs> What about low light? Because low light destroys detail and quality. It turns out it also completely destroys 8K. People actually disliked the 8K footage over the HD or 4K footage. So increasing your resolution at ISO 25600, that's where my test was. Increasing the resolution made it worse. By, it actually showed more noise. It was visible to me. So if you're filming night scenes at high ISOs, just film HD. Save yourself the storage space. We watch documentaries sometimes, and a lot of these documentaries are done by a single cameraman. I see more and more single camera documentaries that use a technique called like in-camera cropping. On TV, jump cuts like we do on YouTube are an absolute no-no. In other words, just jumping from one point in time to another without changing camera angle. You cannot do that. But what you can do sometimes on mid-level productions is to cut to the same camera but then crop in or zoom back. So what happens when you go from 4K to 8K with this cropped footage? 8K cropped looks way better than 4K cropped even when viewed at lower resolutions. Like when viewed at HD or 4K, people do see the difference. 
cropping 150%, about 30% of people appreciated the 8K footage. Cropping 200%, like zooming in 200%, 43% of people thought the 8K footage looked better. So that's higher than normal. And smartphone users, even about 28% of smartphone users, could appreciate the difference between 4K footage and 8K footage when it was cropped in tight. So if you are one of those documentary filmmakers or you're just a YouTuber and you want to do in-camera cuts with zooms, then it might be worth it to go for the higher resolution camera. So a feature that seems superfluous could actually be quite practical in the right applications. Yeah, depending on your production. I called the R5's standard 4K footage garbage. That was rude. Why'd you do that? <laughs> it actually did upset some people. <laughs> I believe it. And the reason is I looked at the standard 4K footage against what it calls the high quality 4K footage. Yeah. And when I looked at them side by side, the standard footage looked like garbage. It was all mushy compared to the high quality footage. And I was like, I would never use the standard footage. Oh, snob. But then I put a couple of tests in there that compared the standard footage versus the 4K high quality yeah. footage. And nobody could tell the difference. Idiots! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so for the nerds out there, we're comparing line skipped 4K versus uh, 8K scaled to 4K. Yeah. Nobody could tell the difference. So this is great news for potential R5 owners. Okay. If you're filming a 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second production, you can do the full width 4K and probably nobody is going to complain without overheating. When you upgrade to the high quality, the camera overheats but it runs regular all day. That's great news, because I was just gonna run regular 4K. You can do that now. I can, and is it garbage? No, it's not. <laughs> Science proved it's not. Science proved it's not garbage, it's acceptable. So, <laughs> when I summarize this, I have to say, most people will not notice, especially because they won't be looking at clips side by side. I need to circle back and say, remember, when it wasn't side by side, Everybody thought it looked the same. Did I notice? You noticed on the cropped footage only. You preferred 4K over HD footage. You had no preference for 8K footage over 4K footage, even watching up close on your 5K monitor, except for the cropped footage. You did appreciate the 8K when it was cropping in. Okay. And in summary, if you're shooting in low light, just film full HD, that's fine. There's no benefit to shooting higher resolution. People, 4K footage, people will appreciate it, but still, most people won't complain if you're still at full HD. And for animals, wildlife and such, there is real benefit to shooting 8K, as there is if you plan to do in-camera crops. Mm -hmm. But the bigger summary is, again, people don't actually view stuff side by side at different resolutions, and people basically never complain when they're filming at lower resolution. So if you don't have the budget to upgrade, don't feel bad about it. But if you do know that, some portion of your audience will appreciate the higher resolution. Yeah. I'd like to hear in the comments what people think. I'm going to send everybody who took the poll an email and hopefully I'll be able to include your particular test results so you can see how you answered each of the different questions to see whether you personally are able to perceive those differences. And in the comments, I'd like to know whether people are willing to spend a few more bucks to get that resolution or if they think it's a total waste. <laughs> just, just passing the baton. <laughs> I don't know. I'm laughing. How's that white wine treating you, Charles? I didn't have a lot. <laughs> I've just been weird all day. <laughs> it's been a real weird day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't know why we're laughing. It's probably because you don't have a Squarespace yet. So get on it and go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. The link is in the description below. You should also probably rate our podcast by now. I know you like it. You've been listening to it while you cook dinner. 
It's been drowning out the screams of your children. We've, we've revived your, the, the lust in your marriage with this thing. Just give it a good rating. <laughs> Thank you, Squarespace. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>